I, I kind of want to ask about your family's uh, connection. I was doing a little reading last night. I, I see your brother is going to be a freshman at Penn State. That's your cousin, Josh Dobbs, was at Tennessee, and now he's in the NFL. And your dad played college football. I, I, I'm assuming you've been around football and all this your whole life. So tell me, tell me a little bit about that. And Robert, you said it correct, my whole life. So I'm the only girl. Uh, I don't really have that many girl cousins. Uh, I got my younger brother, got co uh, my cousins, you know, all guys. Just with that, it's kind of taught me how to be tough in the game of football. You know, I'm not playing it, but I'm in the game of it in the business aspect, right? And so with them just kind of being, you know, those extra mentors or those extra pushes for me has been the greatest thing of overall. Um, I laugh because my brother, Parker, and the ones head to Penn, Penn State, he said, um, you know, I told him that I officially took the job under Coach Smith. He said, that's cool. He said, but when we play y'all, we're going to beat y'all. I said, okay. So now it's a big battle in the house. So my mom, she's like, you know, I don't know whether to wear a Penn State shirt or Illinois shirt. I said, well, you better pick a good choice. I said, it's either Illinois or you just rep Big Ten overall. So that's the battle right now. Uh, so you already know with me in the house, Illinois is on top as of now. <laughs> uh, but that that's kind of the overall. Uh, Josh, he tweeted me last night and he called and he let me know that, uh, you know, he's super proud. His parents, they messaged me as well. Um, and, you know, I wish he was up closer up north. He was with the Steelers, but now he's a little bit even farther away from me. But he'll, hopefully I can get him up to some Illy games. So if this was all happening a year ago when your brother was on the market, what kind of push would you have made uh, to maybe get your brother in champagne? So, you know, I would have made a huge push. I definitely would have. Um, but over with that, with his recruiting process, which helps me with this role, was I got to see the front end and the back end, right? So I got to learn, you know, what to do, what not to do um, when I'm recruiting a kid. Uh, what kind of helps with parents, you know, trying to get in those moms, get in those dads. So that was the best part of his recruiting experience. I used it as like, a, of course, a networking piece, but most importantly, I was learning. I'm a sponge. I was talking to the first woman to coach in the NFL today on Twitter, Coach uh, Jen Welter, and I was telling her, you know, when I communicated with her for the first time, I was a sponge and taking it all in. But with Parker, yeah, I would have made a push. Not going to lie, Terry, we definitely would have made a push. All right. Thanks, Ashley. You're welcome, Robert. Ashton, uh, Nico Heffling with Fox, Illinois. First of all, congratulations on the hire. It sounds like you've been around football your entire life. When did you kind of know that football was something that you wanted to pursue a career in? And maybe what's – What's the, you know, the ultimate goal in terms of a position working with this game? Well, first off, good morning, Nico. Um, one thing about this was I kind of found my passion and love sophomore year of high school, right? So at that moment, you know, like, I'm like, hey, you could pay me $5 a day to go out and scout, recruit, talk, whatever you need me to do, as long as I'm in football. And so that was just that overall thing, how I found that passion. And I will say one thing, and I said this earlier this morning on another interview, was that um, this is going to make you guys laugh. So my dad, he was always Parker's Little League coach. So throughout um, all the way up to middle school, he was always his coach. And for that, they, my dad and mom, they used to force me to go to every practice, every game, every workout. And I, I mean force. So I'm like, I think 11 or 12, and I'm talking back and trying to get in trouble so I don't have to go to any football games or any um, practices the day of or the day after. So that was one thing. So now look at my life. It's all about football. Football never stops. Recruiting never stops. But it's, it's a full circle now. Hey, Ashton, this is Joey Wagner with the Decatur Herald Review. Uh, good morning. You, you mentioned your sophomore year of high school. Can, can you elaborate? Was there something specific that happened that, that really kind of gripped you to the game that, that you knew in, in that moment? Well, hey, Joey. Um, overall, with that one, I'd say just kind of looking back during high school, I was playing basketball. So I was a freshman on varsity. Uh, basketball was life. And I would look at my own recruiting process <clears throat> and I would look at the football players recruiting process 
<clears throat> so I was in the same school and same time as Steven Sims. He currently plays for the Redskins, played at KU. And for him coming out of high school, all he had was KU, right? There really were no offers on the table. Um, so for him, I was kind of watching backdrop and kind of learning from his recruitment process of what to do with an athlete that doesn't have any offers on the table. So that taught me a lot with that and it triggered and I was just like, this is something that I really, really like. And I didn't know, you know, what to call it at that point, you know, whether to call, you know, hey, I love recruiting or I just love this recruitment process of helping him and helping him kind of turned into, you know, learning and helping with my brother and then overall helping Texas and nationwide. So I will say one thing, I'd say shout out to Steven Sims. And then I guess, how did you and Lovey get in contact and can you kind of walk me through how that blossomed into this role? Okay. <clears throat> so I've been uh, close, very close with Joe Price. So I, as you guys know, I've taken the position that Joe has left for UTSA. And with that relationship, it's just a mentor mentee. Um, he's taught me a lot and prepared me for this moment whether it was going to be here at Illinois or, you know, another position somewhere else. And for that, I would love to say thank you to Joe for just prepping me and getting me ready. Uh, when it first, you know, was officially take, I, mean, I took the job. Joe was the first to call me. He was like, hey, I'm going to give you the lay of the land. You know, this is, you know, kind of just the backdrop on everything. And that helped a lot. Um, and with that, uh, from him, it kind of transitioned to a relationship with Patrick Embleton, the director of recruiting for Illinois football. And from him, that kind of triggered that spot with Lovey Smith. And so when I got on the Zoom call with Lovey, he said, you know, my staff, we have, you know, meetings every month, uh, you know, throughout, during out the month. And he said, every time my staff speaks to me, he said, your name always comes up at the very end. And then we were on the Zoom call, just me and him one on one. He said, um, I will say one thing. He said, this conversation didn't just happen. He said, this conversation happened because of God. And at that moment, I said, oh, yeah, I want to work for Coach Lovey Smith. I said, this is someone I want to work for. Ashton, good afternoon. This is Matt Stevens from Illinois Now, Sports Illustrated. Um, I want to just, for people that aren't infinitely familiar with Joe's position um, off the field, can you, can you give an indication as to what your responsibilities are going to be and the vision that you and Lovey have for this position um, as, a, as an off, as an on-campus recruiting kind of specialist? Okay. Well, first off, hello. Um, overall, with that position, it's going to be, of course, what it says in the title, high school relations. And what I like to say is, you know, building networks and connections with the high school coaches and high school recruits here in the state of Illinois. And I'm going to say here, even though I'm in Texas. Um, and then, of course, outside of Illinois. And with that, it's just building up a good rapport, showing them what we're all about before actually coming to campus. So, we're, you know, my job is to attract them to come to Illinois. What can Illinois do for an athlete or what can we do to get them to us? Um, and then from that, of course, just that on-campus recruiting piece. So talking to moms, talking to dads, um, you know, making mom and dads feel comfortable leaving their son with us for the next four or three years if given an opportunity. So that's going to be just the main recruiting piece, just getting them comfortable with me, uh, getting them comfortable with other females on our staff and showing that, the, you know, proving to the moms that there's mother figures here on campus for them, you know, to guide them throughout their years here. And a follow up is I heard you say earlier that you had already kind of looked at the demographics of the state of Illinois and obviously the city of Chicago. And I was curious if you saw anything initially that, you thought was was um, you know a, a red red button issue for you or, or, or a, a bullet point immediate bullet point that, that you look like you can attack or um, you know be a difference maker in so right now um, first day on a job hasn't even been 24 hours and I've gotten calls and contacts from different high school coaches in the Chicago area and outside of Chicago so all around the state and a couple coaches are wanting to set up Zoom calls with me, you know, meeting in different demographics or whether meeting, you know, in this part of, you know, in this city or in, you know, just like I said, different demographics. And so that's one thing that I'm definitely tagging or tackling because like you said, it's a red flag for me. 
So if I can continue to build that or build new relationships, that's going to be my key goal right now. Um, and I had, I will say one thing, I had New Jersey, the state of New Jersey reach out last night and they want me to, you know, do a couple Zoom calls there. So this is going to be a pretty big deal for Illinois. And like I, you know, I can't really promise things, but I can say that this is a new culture and I'm here to tackle those things. I'm here to build those relationships. I'm here to bring in recruits. And more importantly, I'm here to, you know, somehow bring in commitments from our own state. Ashton, Jim Cotter, Orange Blue News, Rivals.com. Uh, jump into the Big Ten at such a young age, just out of college, seems like uh, kind of a big move. What kind of experience do you have, and what do you think that experience is going to give you coming into the uh, job at Illinois? Um, hey, Jim. Uh, for this job, like you said, this is a pretty big deal, and I'm only 23. So, like, I'm giving my age out. Uh, with that, I don't like to say age is a factor in this. I feel like I'm prepared. I feel like I'm ready to take on this big role. And of course, this trailblazer role. Um, this is something that I think not every 23 year old right now can take on. And it's just, it's gonna be, it's gonna be big um, for me to uphold the university morals and conduct and just kind of be a reflection of the football team. That's gonna be my main goal. Um, my main goal right now is like I said before, just get these kids ready for Illinois. Um, show them that we're here, we care, we love them, we love the state, we love outside the states of dem different demographics that we're recruiting now, uh, Texas, Florida, Georgia, and so on. I will say one thing, I am originally from Mississippi, so that's gonna bring in some Mississippi ties for us, which might be really, really, really good for us. Hey Ashton, uh, Scott Ritchie with the Champagne News Gazette. Uh, nice to meet you, even you know, over Zoom. Uh, you mentioned uh, kind of in your opening statement just you know, the fact that you might be in a position to be a role model for uh, many other young women that are interested in football as a career. What does that maybe mean to you at, at 23 where maybe you do have you know, that position in that role? Hey Scott, well it means a lot to me of course. Like I said this is a trailblazer role so this is going to you know pull out 10 times more of what I can do. Now I got to work hard, hard, hard to keep pushing and keep going and keep being that trailblazer. So whether, you know, of course there's going to be some hard times, but I can't let it bend me. I can't let it break me. I got to keep going. Got to stay focused. Um, I was talking to Bobby Roundtree this morning. Uh, he messaged me, welcome to the family. And one thing I said to him was, I can't wait to meet you. Stay strong. And I put it in capital letters and stay consistent because I'll do the same behind you. So it's, it's a big deal for me. Um, it's a big deal. I will say one thing for my mom. She told me last night she was taking it all in. She was like, this is huge. And for me at the moment, I was just sitting there like, wow. Okay. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, oh, here we go. Let's do it. I'm ready. I'm a, like I said, previous athlete, I got that competitive and just that game set mindset. So I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready for whatever's coming. Hey Ashton, I'm, I'm Gavin. It's nice to meet you virtually. Um, I'm just wondering, what do you anticipate as being the biggest challenge of learning this job right now? Well, Gavin, um, I think the biggest challenge overall is kind of how we're working right now through Zoom, right? So I will say big shout out to Coach Lovey and the staff with you know hiring me and actually filling me in, and we're all spread out across the nation. So that's just kind of the biggest challenge right now, just trying to get on top of things, trying to get text messages out to different recruits, different things like that. So we're kind of working with this new way of life and hopefully we can get back to the office so we can get to actual, you know, be together and get to business seriously. So Ashton, in terms of recruiting and, and conversations that you've had with Lovey, you know, whether it was interviews or just casual conversations about, you know, his program, I, I think one of the criticisms or cons, um, 
concerns of Illinois fans has been the lack of, of a culture of in-state recruits wanting to stay home. And I was curious how much conversation you've had with Lovey about trying to change the culture and getting them to kind of think about coming to Champaign first. Similarly to your background in, you know, Mississippi, where kids grow up either wanting to go to MSU or Ole Miss and kids from Texas wanting to, you know, getting a lot of pressure to stay home. Um, is that possibly one of your biggest, you know, challenges initially is to try to change the culture with these high school coaches, these high school players to make them think in state first? So that, like you said, that's going to be the biggest challenge overall or the biggest aspect of what I'm trying to do. So on that Zoom call with Lovey, his main thing was, you know, the reasoning of hiring me was one, I was qualified. And two was he wants to continue to build and change that culture. So when I walk into high schools in Illinois, I'm expecting to see coaches with Illinois mugs on their desk. That's how much I want to build that in-state love and relationship. And how you brought up, you know, Ole Miss, Mississippi State. That is a culture there in the state. It's either one or the other. And if you don't like either two of those, you're Alabama. And that's what I want to do here at Illinois. And even if I got a hand out, you know, like a sticker or something like, hey, Illinois, this is the way. Come to us first. See what we have to offer. We have new facilities, great coaching staff. And like I said, overall, that new culture. And that's what I'm here for, to bring that to in you know, innovate it, bring it more out. Ashton, you mentioned, you know, Sims and kind of watching that process develop, but, but in this job, there seems to be maybe a certain level of communication you have to excel in to, to connect with a lot of different people. Did you kind of realize that that was something you could do with Sims or did you know that you you know, were a good communicator before or after that? I, I guess when did that kind of become clear to you? Um, I will say, you know, always been pretty good at communicating. Uh, I like to say you can drop me off in any spot and I'll be fine. Uh, but oh, I think the biggest element of that was, you know, during the process of working with the old coach and the XFL. So the old coach, I was going out to different seven on seven events, um, different high school events, uh, Nike opening under I'm all American. And for me, I took advantage of these opportunities and I actually went out and met people face to face, whether it was coaches. And like I said before, trainers, different things like that. And they're looking like, who in the world is this girl? Like <laughs> walking on the field, like she's supposed to be here. And that's just what I did. And from there, I built my brand as Ashton Washington. Uh, and they, you know, learn to trust me and learn that I had a good rapport with them and they would pass it on to other guys or other coaches around the nation. And that's just how it kind of took off from there. But I will say for me, you know, just pushing myself to go out and meet people face to face rather than social media was the biggest part of it all. <laughs> 